Welcome along to part three of our tutorial series where we are cre creating a platform game using Scratch. In the previous tutorials we did get our little uh, player moving around the page by using our arrow keys and he was able to jump around on the platforms. At the end of um, the second video we actually made our dog die when he hit the bottom of the screen and fell off the platform. So I'll just give you a quick example of that now. So I'll press the green play button and see what our dog following our block around. He animates and when we jump off the edge here, he dies. Okay, so I'm just going to stop that there. What we're going to do now is start to set our levels up. Okay, I'm going to have three different levels in this game. So the first thing I want to do is go over to here where I've got my stage. Okay, and what we're going to do is click on the backdrops tab that's appeared up here. And we're going to give this stage a background color. And the way we do that is just grab the fill bucket from here. I'm going to choose a light yellow color and just click in the background. And that's put a nice backdrop on our first level. Now we're going to have three levels as I just said before. So what we need to do is paint a second backdrop in for level two. Now level two can just be a light purple color. And we're going to just hit the paintbrush here for one more backdrop. So backdrop three for our third level. And I'll just go a light pink. Okay, some, some light pastel -y colors here you can use for your backdrops. Just click back on the first one so that your first level has the yellow backdrop color. Okay, so that's easy enough. What we're going to do next is we're going to click on the platform sprite. Now on the platform sprite, we're going to design our levels. This blue platform here, it's no good to us. We're going to get rid of it. Okay, so you can just use your selection tool here just to draw a box over it and delete it. And what I'm going to get you to do is grab your rectangle tool and turn the fill color on here. And I'm just going to start with red. It's a little bit hard to see here, but I can just see my checkerboard. I'm going to start drawing some platforms into my game that my dog can jump around on. I'm going to do them in different colors just to keep it looking good. A little bit more interesting if you do the different colors, I think. So I'm going to do three levels there. So once he pops down on those three, we're going to get him to jump further down. I might go a green block next, and I might put that over there. We'll go a blue block over here. I'll make this one a bit smaller, so it's a bit harder to jump onto. Uh, we've got purple, I guess. We'll go over here with a purple. Make that one a bit longer. And I might finish with a bright pink right down in this bottom corner. So that's level one. Okay, and you can see these blocks appearing on your stage now. So that's how our level is going to look. So that looks good for level one. What we're going to do now is we make a second costume. So just click on that paintbrush to paint a new costume. And this is going to be level two. Okay, now level two is going to look a bit different. Still going to have platforms. Uh, I'm going to go with the blue for this color. Now we want this to look like a ladder, I guess, more than anything. So I'm going to draw one side of the ladder there. And I'm going to draw another side over here, making sure they go from top to bottom of the page. Similar width. Now I'm just going to draw some platforms for our dog to jump around on. Whoops. Didn't mean to move that. Just make sure that's big enough still. All right. So to draw the platforms now, just draw one out here. Then we'll draw one coming out this side. I'm going to do four platforms, so just do yourself two on each side. A bit like a ladder, I guess, if anything. You can make some bigger, make some smaller. Might make this last one nice and long. There you go, so something like that. And you can see up here in your screen what that's going to look like, so you should be able to jump around on those platforms, no worries. You can see that doesn't quite go to the edge of the page there. I was wondering why that is. I'll worry about that later if it's an issue. And we'll just paint in a third backdrop now. I'm going to go with, say, red for this color. Um, I'm going to draw a skinny little platform up at the top there. Might even move it down a little bit. And I might draw a little obstacle for him to jump over. Uh, from there, I'll just add a few more platforms around the page that he can jump onto. One final platform right down the bottom here 
There we go. That should do us for our last level. Okay. Still a bit worried about why this isn't reaching the bottom of the page there. I might just try and extend that. I'll zoom in a bit here and just see if we can extend this down. Yeah, not sure what's going on there, but anyway, it's a minor issue and it shouldn't affect our game anyway because he is jumping around on the platforms. Okay, so hopefully your um, level joins up there. Not sure what's going on with mine. Anyway, we've got our three levels drawn up now. Um, just sorry, back in that costume there, you want to click on this first box because that is our first level. Okay, so you want that to appear on the stage first of all. Next thing I'm going to do is get some coding uh, worked out so that these levels are centered exactly in the middle of our stage when we first load the game up. So before we put in the code, I just want to make up one more new variable called level. It's going to tell us which level we are on. So whether it's level 1, 2 or 3. Click OK and make sure you uncheck the box next to the word level there. OK. And still on the platforms sprite here, what we're going to do is now put in a block that resets the levels when we start our game. So we go back to level 1 every time we start our game. We center the backdrops and we also switch these costumes and backdrops each time we change the level. Okay, so we're going to bring out an event here. At the moment it says when I receive game over. We're going to click on the little drop down box and make a new message up here and it's going to be called setup. Okay, so when I receive setup, we haven't actually defined setup yet, but we're going to do that shortly. But when we do get the message to set up our game, what we're going to do is go to our looks here and we've got this option here that says switch backdrop. Okay, and we're going to switch backdrop to in our data tab here, our level. Okay, so whichever level we're on, we're going to switch the backdrop over to match it. Okay, the other thing we're going to do is position our backdrops in the center of the page. So in your motion tab there, just make sure you've got go to X0 and Y0. That just centers it right in the middle of the stage. And the final thing we want to do is, instead of switch backdrop this time, we're going to switch the costume to match whatever level we're on. So that whether it's level 1, 2 or 3, we're going to go to level 1, 2 or 3's costume. Okay, so that's all the code we need on a platform for now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make another new sprite, which is going to be an empty sprite, and it's going to be our game control sprite, and it's going to do things like change our levels and set the start positions for each of our sprites. So what we're going to do is just click this paintbrush here where we paint a new sprite, and just leave that empty. Okay, so you can just go back to the scripts tab here. Hit the little information symbol in the top left there, and rename it from sprite 1 to game control and then just press the back arrow there. So we've got this empty sprite now ready to work with. Before we start coding on it, what we want to do is just go back to the data tab here, and we're going to make two more new variables. One's going to be called bones. And very shortly, we're going to be drawing some bones for our dog to collect. Okay, it's all part of the dog's dinner game. And he has to collect these bones for dinner. Okay, and this variable is going to count how many bones are still on the screen. Okay, so just uncheck the box next to the word bones. The other variable we're going to make now is called level over. And we're going to click OK on that and uncheck the box. And this variable is basically going to tell us whether the level's still going or whether the level has finished. Okay, there's going to be two options for that one there. So now we're ready to start adding some code to this game control sprite to set up our game. So in the events tab, we're going to bring out the when a green flag is clicked when we start our game. First thing we want to do in our data tab here is we want to set our level to 1 so that we start at the first level. Okay, so set level to 1. We're starting at level 1. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring out this set option again. Instead of level over, we're going to choose bones. And we're going to set the bones to 0. Okay, so that's going to show us that we've collected 0 bones. And then in the events tab here, we're going to broadcast some messages. Okay, the first one we're going to broadcast is going to be set up. Okay, actually we're not going to broadcast that, we're going to broadcast it and wait. So sorry, we'll bring out broadcast setup and wait. Okay, so we're going to 
tell the sprites to get into their start positions and then we're just going to wait a moment before we actually start the game. So once everything has been set up, we've got all our backdrops right in the center of the page there and all our sprites are in position. Once that's happened, then we can broadcast the message to start our game. So we're just going to have to make a new message here to broadcast start. And that's going to allow our game to kick off. Okay. Then in the control tab here, we're going to bring out the wait until. And in our operators here, I want you to bring out the equal sign. And we're going to wait until level, level over equals 1. Okay, when it equals zero, it means the level's not over. But when level over equals one, it means we've got to the finish point, which is going to be a portal. And once we've reached that portal, then the level is over. Okay, and that number one will mean that the level is over. Okay, uh, when we do finish a level, what we want to do is change just our level by one. So if we finish level one, that will change our level to level two. If we finish level 2, it will go up by 1 and it will be on to level 3. Okay, and what we want to do is keep repeating this code until we get to the end of our game. So we're going to go into the control tab here and we're going to bring out the repeat until loop. Oops, and just wrap that around that code. And we're going to repeat that code until the level is equal to 4. Okay, we don't have a level 4, but if we get to level 4, that means it's the end of our game. Okay, so in your data, just bring out level. So we repeat all this code inside this repeat until loop until we get to the level 4, which obviously doesn't exist. It's just the end of our game. Okay, when we do get to the end of our game, the last thing we want to do in our events tab here is just broadcast one more message. And we're going to have to make a new message for it, and it's going to be win. Okay. You can snap this code now onto the rest of the code in there. Just clean that up. So just make sure that you've got everything set up nicely there. That's going to set up a few things to start our game. Okay. Some of the other things we need to do now, since we've got this broadcasting a start message, what we're going to do is go over to our player block. Okay. And instead of starting when the green flag is clicked, we're going to start when we receive the broadcasted message of start. So what we're going to need to do is just disconnect this code and when the green flag is clicked, get rid of it. So just drag it over here until it disappears. And instead we're going to bring out when I receive start and snap that onto the code right there. Okay, so when we get the message to start our game, that's when we can activate all of this code. We need to do that on the dog as well. Okay, so pop over to your dog, and you'll see that this big chunk of code here has when the green flag is clicked to start it off. Just get rid of that, and bring out when I receive start. Okay, clean that up. That's looking better. So when we receive the start message, and obviously the dog works, and our player block works. Okay, so that's looking good. Next thing we're going to do is, back on the player block, we're going to get the start position sorted. At the moment, our dog is starting down at the bottom of the page. Okay, if I run this game now, he dies straight away, Okay, which is not ideal. So what we want to do is get him starting up the top of the page here. Okay, so we want to go back to our player block. Our dog is following this player block. So wherever we put our player block, that's where our dog's going to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out from my events here when I receive setup. Okay, I might just try and drag this over a bit so we can put it in its own section. You can see what's going on. Okay, so when I receive setup, this means we need to set up our sprites in their starting positions. First thing I'm going to do is go into looks here, and you'll see that we've got something called set color effect. We're actually going to change that to ghost and choose 100. And all that's going to do is remove that red block or the player block from behind our dog. Okay, whoops, I'm going to go back to the player block. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that red block now behind our dog. We're just going to create a ghost. Um, Ghosting is really good because it allows for collisions to occur um, still, which is handy. The uh, next thing we're going to do is go into motion and where it's got set rotation style, we're going to change it to don't rotate. Okay, we don't want this sprite rotating. And now we just need to put in our start positions for each level. So it's an if-then statement. 
in control here, we bring out the if then. And we need to work out if we're at level 1. So if level equals 1, we need to tell it where to start. Okay, so in my data there, I'm going to bring out level and equals 1. So if we're on level 1, where's our start position? Okay, so it's going to be up here somewhere. So in motion, we just need to say go to X and Y and tell it where to go to. Okay, so I'm going to try minus 175 for our X position. That pushes him to the left-hand side of the page. And for the Y position, I'm going to try about 140. Okay, and if I run the green flag, let's see where he ends up. There we go, pretty much bang on. Okay, he did a little bit of a fall when he started, but that's looking good. And you can see when our game's running, while this green flag's highlighted, that red block disappears. As soon as I stop the game, the red block comes back, that player block. Okay, but as soon as you run your game now, it disappears. And that dog's in a great starting position. So that was a pretty good guess for the X and Y position for my dog. Okay, so that's level one sorted. What we want to do now is level two. So I'm going to duplicate this yellow piece of code here and go if level equals 2. Where do we want our dog to start? Okay, so this is going to change for both you and I, okay, because we've got our blocks set up in different positions. So if you need to change the X and Y values a little bit, by all means go for it. Now I'm just going to guess for level 2 where this goes. Okay, we're going to fine tune it later on, but I'm going to put in 50 for my X value and 180 for my Y value. Okay, I'll just go to the platforms for a sec. I want him up here somewhere when we start. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be a tough one. But we'll just say, for now, X equals 50, Y equals 180. And we can change that later. I'm going to duplicate that code one more time now and put if level equals 3. So this is our final level. Okay, the X and Y values for this one. I'm going to guess minus 30 and 140. Okay, if those values are wrong, that's fine. We can change that later on. But when he starts level 2 and 3, we just need to check that he's in a pretty good position. All right, we'll be able to check that soon. Okay, we're not quite up to that stage of the game yet. We should still be on level 1 here, or costume 1 at the minute. Okay, we can't get to level 2 just yet. All right, so that's looking pretty good for now. I think I might stop the video here. I've been rambling on for long enough. We've got our three levels set up now. In the next video we're going to bring in some portals and that's going to allow us to skip through all the different levels. Okay, so stop that game. I'll save what I've got and I'll see you in the next video.